Welcome to our new video in virtual reality. Uh, today we're going to discuss a new drug from a biotech company called uh, Biogen that was just recently approved by the FDA for treating Alzheimer's disease. It's the first drug cleared by the FDA to slow cognitive decline in people living with Alzheimer's and the first new medicine for the disease in nearly two decades. So the FDA's decision was controversial, but we're not going to discuss that side of things. Instead, we're going to discuss the mechanism of action of this drug, uh, which by the way goes by the name uh, aducanumab. So aducanumab targets a sticky compound in the brain, that we see here, uh, known as a beta amyloid, which uh, scientists uh, expect that it plays a role in this devastating and cruel disease. So, yeah, the structural analysis uh, show how it binds a linear epitope between residues three and six, and we are going to be just discussing that uh, structure soon. But before, let's take a look at how beta amyloid actually aggregates, right? And by the way, I'm joined by uh, Carla and John today. Well, thanks for the intro, Daniel. So, yeah, Daniel's right. Beta amyloid is kind of one of the major uh, features that causes Alzheimer's. And it does so by starting off as these monomers that are somewhat disordered, you know, with the alpha helix, but largely disordered. And however, as they come together, they can form oligomers that are highly stabilized to their beta sheets. Right, and we see in blue the end terminus, which are the the parts that bind to this new drug and um, mm. they're pretty floppy and they're not very stable which is why they actually solved these structures with the NMR because they, they were not mm. able to uh, crystallize them right with the x-ray crystallography so very thankfully true. we have this other technique so we could actually get uh, a picture of the shape of these molecules the structure yeah and so um, yeah yeah Yes, Carla? So this, uh, this central one uh, with the anti-parallel beta sheets is actually the most common of the um, oligomeric forms. Mm. So this one forms pores, and this one just forms more of the uh, the tangles, the fibrillary tangles. So This bad. is the, um, yeah. yeah, the antigen binding fragment, you know, FAB, um, which is the region of the antibody that binds uh, to antigens. So here, here we have uh, adufab showing the heavy chain in green, the light chain in cyan. Mm. And of course we have here in magenta, the epitope, which is the beta amyloid, the end terminus of the beta amyloid as we just discussed, mm. and just binding in here uh, really nicely. So there's some key mm. interactions that happen in here, uh, <clears throat> residue, histidine 6 and phenylalanine, uh, phenylalanine 4 are really buried in the pocket and you can see how that pocket uh, they are uh, showing in yellow in this hydrophobic representation so yeah they're pretty hydrophobic sub pockets and uh, they've been shown to be the cr most critical residues actually right carla they did some um yeah. alanine scanning to prove Hot that experimentally mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, of course, we see some hydrogen bondings as well happening. The, the histidine here to this uh, tyrosine also making a hydrogen bond. We have another up here. I think we should um, reduce the opacity a little bit of the surface so mm. we can explore this a little better. Yeah, there's some so, key pi stacking yeah. interactions too that we can look at, like yeah. for the phenylalanine right. and the tryptophan 52 mm. down near the bottom. Mm. That's right. Let's get into the pocket here real big. And we can get a near, nice view here. Mm. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, I definitely see the tryptophan. Uh, what about the histidine, Carla? Does it have any uh, pi pi stacking? Stacking, or is it just a hydrophobic interaction? Looks like maybe with the tyrosine 32 behind it. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, could you measure the distance of that just so uh, we can get some kind of reference, see how likely sure. uh, that interaction is? That's yeah. this one here. Yeah, we yeah, have 3.5 so. angstroms. 
Well, that's not too bad at all. Especially with some wobble that's going to happen. Right. And it's interesting mm. that the two most polar residues, the aspartate and, and arginine, are kind of solvent exposed. Hmm. Well, this glutamic right. acid over here is also uh, yeah. pretty far out. Interesting. Hmm. Wow, it's it's really great to be able to grab the molecule like this, scale it, get into the pocket, virtual reality. We can hmm. really gain an understanding of this structure much quicker hmm. than ever before. Yeah, so we have the polymer here. Is that a polymer or oligomer? It's an oligomer, but there's a, yeah. Yeah, and mm. some kind of overlap there. in the terms. Monomer yeah. part that yeah. can fit into right. the... So that's what would bind in there. So the antibody would hopefully Anything. just bind Same. it and make it um, inactive or prevent it to, to keep building up, I guess, right? Or potentially clear, clearing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's and definitely clear and... from it. Yeah, it is yeah. for sure. Any any of these blue ones in, in terminus would potentially be a, a target here, right? Mm -hmm. This one. Oh, yeah, there's just a lot of this open one. space there. Once you get beyond those beta sheets, um, how does it look? And obviously, it's able to bind to uh, oligomer really capably. But what makes it uh, stand out compared to other antibodies that target similar features of uh, yeah. amyloid beta, Daniel? Well, it actually has micromolar affinity aducanumab for the uh, monomeric and terminus versus, um, um, yeah, and Perfect. nanomolar for the oligomeric form. Wow. wow. Right. So here we see how it binds to the end terminus, right? And this is still one of the figures of the paper, which is actually mm -hmm. an elect electronic microscopy image. Showing here in this top left is the aducanumab, this new drug, and we see all these dark spots. That's actually gold that's been used to actually mm. show uh, because the gold is bound to the antibody, right? And so um, this shows uh, where the antibody is binding in in these oligomers. So we see a lot of binding with aducanumab here in in red. Uh, whereas all the three other antibodies, there's a lot less binding. Actually, this one, there's no binding at all to, in the bottom right. So, yeah, yeah it just I shows can see how, the, how the aducanumab is supposedly working um, very well. I can definitely see how the selectivity that Carla mentioned could really help drive this differentiation of where some of these antibodies might kind of bind to monomers and not to the fibrils as capably because of that uh, lack of specificity. Right, by binding to the oligomers, uh, they're really targeting mm. what needs to get targeted, right? To prevent the, mm. the buildup of these plaques mm -hmm. and uh, the progression of Alzheimer's, right? Um, so they've been able not to- interfere with the yeah. monomeric form yeah. in the native function. That is a good point, yeah. I mean, it's secreted for a reason, right? Yeah. Right, and it, it keeps building up, and then that causes a problem. So this particular drug just mm. binds the one that creates the problem rather than the uh, mm. the, monomer, the signal, right? yeah, peptide, mm -hmm. yeah. No? That sounds very good. This is great, yeah. You know, the structure... Binding and um, in silico studies described in this study, you know, they contribute to our growing understanding of the structure activity mm. relationship of the uh, you know, anti amyloid antibodies. And, and it may have important implications for understanding why certain antibodies may or may not work for immunotherapy. And um, yeah, mm. that's great. We hope that yeah. this drug that was just recently approved, as we said, uh, will make a difference in people's lives. And um, yeah, thank you, John. Thank you, Carla. Um, thank you, everybody watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.